WLD Orchard Lake in 88.1 WBFH Bloomfield Hills. Today's edition of the Megacast begins now. Welcome to the Megacast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keeft. Or uh, I soon will be. There I am. I'm Tyler Keeft. Today we'll be talking to a number of people about topics of interest and importance to Michiganders just like you. Let's begin with what's making headlines today on a very chaotic Wednesday on CivicCenterTV.com on our local news page. Our top story comes from Eileen Wingblad at the Oakland Press. Speaking of chaos, there's not going to be much today in this afternoon at 1 p.m. You'll hear the tornado siren going off in your local community, but there is no cause for worry as it's all part of a scheduled test in recognition of Severe Weather Awareness Week. Michiganders are encouraged by the National Weather Service and their local authorities to do their part in practicing as well, practicing their emergency plans if time permits this afternoon, or at the very least, getting those started or reviewing your previous plans for when severe weather strikes this season and beyond. According to the National Weather Service's metrics, Michigan averages about 15 tornadoes per year, mostly in the spring and the early parts of the summer when we get all those big severe thunderstorms. But it's never too early to make sure that you are prepared for when that severe weather approaches. While many of these tornadoes don't usually threaten us here in Oakland County, they have before, and many times before, in fact, including you, uh, one, one that you can reference and learn a lot about on our website at civiccentertv.com. It's the West Bloomfield Tornado of 1976 that ripped right through our local area just a little bit. Uh, south of us here from our studio in West Bloomfield Township. These do happen in Oakland County, in northern Oakland County. They, they regularly will have tornado warnings from other counties and, and uh, no, just north of us here in Oakland County and in the mid-Michigan area where these things tend to happen quite often. But uh, just because these sort of severe weather events do not usually happen here in Oakland County, that does not mean that they won't ever happen in our local area. So what goes into a good emergency weather plan? Well, there's a few things uh, among others that are listed in this article and, and that we just know from our, our knowledge already standing about dealing with se severe weather. Number one is know the terminology. What is the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning? So in the case of a tornado watch uh, versus a warning, a watch is more along the lines of the conditions are looking like they could be right for a tornado to arise and potentially be a threat to your local area, whether it's Oakland County or Macomb County, Wayne County, Washington. When I say Oakland County tornado watch, that means that the weather conditions that are coming in, those severe weather conditions that are being forecast, might be ripe for a tornado to form in Oakland County. That doesn't mean that one is forming, one has formed, or that one will touch down in our local area. It simply means that those conditions are there. All the ingredients for a tornado are in place. It's a matter of how they all mix together that determines whether or not a tornado will threaten our local area. That's different from a tornado warning. A tornado warning indicates that a tornado has been seen in our local area or nearby our local area and is traveling potentially on a path toward Oakland County. And whether that's the tip of Oakland County on the north side or south side or directly in the middle of our county or that tornado originated right here in Oakland County proper, regardless of where it originates, what path it's taken, if it looks like it could come through Oakland County, even just a little slither in, in one of the sliver of the county in one of the corners, that's still going to affect Oakland County. That's going to cause a tornado warning. But knowing the difference is huge because knowing the difference between a watch and a warning determines how much prep time you have. If there's a tornado watch, you got more, a little bit more time to prepare those extra things that you need in the case of a tornado and in case you're going to be sheltering in place in a safe part of your home, in a basement, or in a, a, in a, a bathroom tub, or, or a closet that's away from windows and more centralized in your home. That's going to determine how much time you have to prepare. If it's a tornado warning, you got to get those belongings quickly and get to that spot where you can take shelter. If it's a tornado watch, you may have a little bit more time. That being said, either way, you should make sure you're prepared uh, if, if you're seeing forecasts that predict that tornadic, tornadic activity might be happening in or around our local area here in Oakland County. Another thing to do is to know what to look for. What does what those conditions usually look like outside as a tornado is approaching or may be uh, or may soon touch down in your local area. Dark greenish skies, large hail, dark clouds that look like they're pretty low in the sky and loud freight train like roaring sounds 
are typically some of the signs of an approaching tornado. So in those cases, if you're seeing those sort of conditions and you know there's a tornado watch, maybe you haven't looked at the forecast lately, you haven't looked at your TV or listened to your radio for more updated information or social media for more updated information on the conditions currently in your local area, that's an, those are some signs, some visuals from outside that you can see and say, okay, this looks like there could be something coming along this way. I know we're in a severe weather situation here tonight. Maybe it's time to go to our designated shelter location in our home or around our home and, and make sure that we're in a safe situation. Number three, this is arguably the most important, know where to look for information. In this case, you may be able to, to turn on the TV or turn on the radio and listen or watch for information from your local outlets, those meteorologists in our local area. That would be the National Weather Service and their website, or a NOAA battery-powered radio is a great is a great resource to have, especially in the event of high winds and other severe weather that may be taking place during a tornado warning or or. Uh, before a tornado warning and knock out your power. Hey, we know a whole lot about that recently. So if you lose your power, how are you gonna get those forecasts? A battery powered radio, a crank radio, NOAA weather radio, all good, good resources for keeping up to date on that information. And otherwise, if you do have power, you can go to channel two, four, and seven in the, in the Oakland County area in, in Detroit who have trained meteorologists who are tracking these sorts of activities all day and every day, and especially when there's severe weather activity. Same thing on the radio side with, uh, with, with radio stations like WJR and WWJ who have their own meteorology teams as well and are able to track these storms. But online, National Weather Service's website, NWS, uh, the NWS has their website for the Metro Detroit area that you can go to and research more information. It's weather.gov slash Detroit, weather.gov slash Detroit. Or even just go to weather.gov and you can log in your specific zip code and it will give you more weather and forecast information for where you are living right here in Oakland County, whether you're in you know, 48323 here in West Bloomfield where our station is or other zip codes all around the Oakland County area. That's a great resource for information during severe weather. A and other places too to get some information, something like Nixle, which is used by local law enforcement and public safety, the police and the fire, and we'll give you updates in your local area when there's you know, road closures or severe weather activity or massive power outages that are affecting the roads or other uh, you know, public safety matters. Our local law enforcement are able to send alerts out via email, via cell phone, and it's a free service that you can sign up to, of course, with text message, messages, text message rates applying where, you know, where they do, in, in, depending on, on uh, your cell phone plan. But this is all great stuff for you to get information, great resources for you to get information in the event of severe weather. Number four, have what you need where you need it beforehand, or at least make sure you have what you need and you can prepare it quickly in the event of a severe weather situation. So food, water, necessities that you're gonna need, medicine, a first aid kit in case there, are, there is falling debris or God forbid your home uh, comes into some danger or somebody in your, in your family or yourself are injured and you need to apply first aid while you wait for somebody uh, from you know, first responders to get to you or other public safety to get to you and provide you help. And that should be where you need to be in the event of severe weather. So in the case of a tornado, if you have a designated spot in your home that is the safest place to shelter in place when there's a tornado warning, it's a good idea to have some, some non-perishable food, some water bottles, uh, and, and so on, the first aid kit, and, and what you might need, maybe some hard-covered books, too, to put over your head like we used to do in elementary school and middle school and high school for those tornado warning drills, uh, just so that you're ready, so that when those sirens go off, and it is a legitimate tornado emergency, like a tornado warning, and those sirens go off, you know where you need to go, you, need what, you, you know what you have uh, out of what you need, and you, and you know that's all in one centralized location, and you're not running around your home trying to collect all these goods in the minutes you may or may not have to get yourself to safety. And always a plan of action in the event of an actual emergency, much like today's test siren, the, the sirens will sound for upwards of three minutes. If a tornado has been sighted or conditions suggest that one may come down in your local area uh, in, as an imminent threat in the, in the coming minutes. That will usually happen in these events. Today, what will happen, one o'clock p.m., 
here in Oakland County and throughout the state of Michigan, the tornado sirens will be going off. It is just a test. And in the in the case where severe weather may pop up on the day of a test, the National Weather Service, local weather authorities, law enforcement, and municipalities, they will announce to the local area, hey, we're expecting some weather events to come through and we'll cancel this specific test. So, in this, so that in that case, if you do hear a siren, you'll know that it is legitimate. That being said, whenever you hear those sirens go off, you should take it seriously and you should assume that when those sirens are going off, there is an emergency. That being the case, there is no cause for concern today at 1 p.m. when those tornado sirens go off. It is just a test as we recognize Severe Weather Awareness Week. Also making headlines today from Kara Berg at the Detroit News. Attorneys representing the Oxford Community School District are asking a federal judge to dismiss 10 remaining lawsuits in relation to the November 2021 school shooting that took the lives of four students and injured several others. This is in the wake of the recent court decision that determined that the Oxford schools qualified under governmental immunity laws uh, and could not be held liable for the lives lost due to, to the mass shooting, at least not at the state level. But that is not without some opposition. However, that opposition has a bit of an uphill battle as they will have to prove to this federal court and to this federal judge that Oxford Community Schools took action that created a more dangerous situation that increased the likelihood of danger being posed to the community by the shooter, who was 15 at the time of the massacre, uh, by letting him back into the school and not taking further action after those conversations that they had uh, with administration, with the front office, with his parents involved, and so on. It comes down to whether or not the shooter was more of a threat to his peers and his school after those meetings had occurred with administration and even his parents. Unless that can be proved, these lawsuits will likely be struck down by a federal judge. Both sides did make their arguments in court this week. However, no immediate action was made on one way or the other. Federal U.S. District Court Judge Mark Goldsmith said that a decision will be made at a later date in this matter. And there's, so there's so much information that is being uh, thrown out there at this time, continues to, to be out there about the Oxford High School shooting and this particular case, while we're also seeing information about the case against the shooter, whether or not he will be tried uh, to the fullest extent, uh, to the fullest extent and potentially face a sentence of life in prison without parole. That's of course pending some other court decisions as well uh, and what's called a Miller hearing and we have information on that also on our website from previous articles on civiccentertv.com and, and on previous editions also of the Megacast in our headline segments. Also that uh, the shooter's parents James and Jennifer Crumbly remain under trial uh, at, uh, at this time for their potential involvement in the shooting and, and, and may be held, held liable the first time in the U.S. history that a parent uh, or parents have been tried in the case of a school shooting. In this situation, they are facing charges such as involuntary manslaughter, four counts of, of, of that, one for each of the students that were killed in November of 2021 by their son, which could face up to 15 years in prison for each of them should they be convicted on those on those alleged crimes and in this case the lawsuits that do remain are federal are federal lawsuits and so that's why u.s district court judge mark goldsmith will be making this ruling and this decision that doesn't involve at the state level where government immunity was granted so those statewide lawsuits which were more than a dozen of them uh, were were basically rendered invalid because the school district had immunity that's not necessarily the case at the federal level at least that has not been determined uh, and, and most likely uh, won't be determined per the information that we have uh, from articles like this and, and others on this matter at this time. But that does not mean that the Oxford Community School District may not be uh, be able to be held liable potentially from a, from the federal from federal courts in these lawsuits should that go that way. That decision, of course, as as was mentioned in this article, has yet to be made. And the judge in this case, federal judge uh, in the U.S. District Court, Mark Goldstein, says. He, uh, Goldsmith, my apologies, says that he will be making a decision on this at a later date. Uh, just a moment, I'll take a sip here. And we'll continue on making headlines today on our local news page from Claire Hendrickson at the Detroit Free Press. Democrats in Lansing have officially sent bills to repeal the so-called right to work law and reinstate prevailing wages to Governor Gretchen Whitmer's desk. If signed into, into law, the 2012 law that allowed those in jobs 
that required them to join a union to opt out of paying those union dues and other fees would no longer be law at all. A huge win in that case for labor unions statewide, but one that those in opposition of the repeal say would come at immense cost to individual working Michiganders. As for prevailing wages, that basically translates to workers on state construction projects being paid at the same rate and with the same benefits as union workers in that capacity on non-state related jobs. These bills come after both chambers originally proposed and passed their own versions of these pieces of legislation. Ultimately, the state Senate took on the House's most recent bills, modified them and tweaked them on their own and in between the two chambers and ultimately passed final versions of the bill that, that of these bills that were sent to Governor Whitmer's desk. Now it all comes down to Governor Gretchen Whitmer and whether or not she decides to sign these into law or veto them and send them back through legislative processes. More than likely, because these are bills that are uh, that have been passed by her Democratic colleagues in the legislature and were part of, of uh, critical, uh, critical uh, tentpole issues from her campaign and, and other Democrats' campaigns in 2022, more than likely, this will be signed into law. Re the repeal of the 2012 so-called to right to work law will go through and so so will prevailing wages. Both were things that Governor Whitmer had previously said she wanted to make happen, but crazier things have happened in the past and, and so it all really doesn't become official until Governor Whitmer signs them into law. That has not happened just yet. We'll keep you updated if that does happen going forward. Finally, making headlines today on our local news page on civiccentertv.com from Mark Torregrossa at MLive. And I know, as I've said before, whenever we have an article from Mark Torregrossa and the team at MLive, uh, it tends to come uh, with, with some bad news. And Calvin, I see that you have a, our article in preview. Uh, there is an error there, so we won't put that into uh, our, our feed on, on the screen. You can, however, click through that article if you so choose, Calvin. In this case, the news from Mark Torre Gross on the team at M Live may actually be some good news, depending on how you feel about our su summer weather. The end of the La Nina season is soon to come, and that may impact your summer weather right here in Oakland County and as you're traveling all across the Great Lakes state. Typically, meteorologists see cooler conditions in Michigan after La Nina ends, and then the El Nino, an, an El Nino period begins. But between Mark Torregrossa from MLive as well as Bill Marino, a meteorologist from the National Weather Service out of Grand Rapids, they believe that this summer may actually be on the warmer side uh, than normal despite the warmer winter season. What does that mean for us for real? Well, that's to be determined. There's still plenty of time between now and when the summer season comes around. But as we had a warmer than normal winter, they're also saying that there's potential not that there's going to be, but there's potential that this summer may be warmer than usual. For some, that's good news. For some, they may be very happy about this summer potentially being warmer than it normally has been because they're sick and tired of the cold. They want the sunshine. They want not, no clouds in the sky. Be able to get out on the beaches around Michigan, travel, walk downtown in their local area, and finally get back outside and just see sunshine after months and months of gray skies and clouds and on and off snowfall and severe weather, weather that knocked out our power and ice storms. Maybe it's fun to see some sunshine for others. You know, summer in Michigan is already hot enough. It's already humid enough in our local area. A little bit more might just be uh, something that brings them to the point that says, you know what, maybe let's go back to that warm winter we had. Whatever your taste is, we'll want to keep up to date on this and, and read this article. Really interesting information as they went into detail about forecasts uh, over the, uh, going forward and, and based that off of information from the past 20 or so years, and the relationship between the end of La Nina and the beginning of El Nino and what that means for our weather patterns here in Michigan as you get into the summer seasons. Typically in the past, it's actually said that when you have a warmer winter in these cases and La Nina ends and an El Nino period begins, that your summer's typically going to be a little bit cooler. But there's information here that suggests to uh, meteorologist Bill Marino as well as Mark Torregrossa from MLive that that might not actually be the case. So, an interesting thing to consider as we get closer and closer to the summer season. All these headlines can be read on our website, civiccentertv.com, on our local news page. Just click through to those links, either from the th thumbnail pictures we put there or the headlines themselves, and you can read this whole these whole articles in full, as well as supporting materials from a number of publications all across our local area. And if you have the means to do so, we would highly encourage you to subscribe to these publications and support the great journalism being done all across 
our local area at a variety of levels. In addition to all that, on our local news page, we have links to COVID-19 and other public health updates from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and locally from the Oakland County Health Division. We have a great show ahead on this edition of the MegaCast. Coming up next, it's that time of the year. It is tax season, but that doesn't mean that you have to go take your tax return and spend it on some outlandish vacation or something that you may, may not need in your home. How can you make your tax return work for you? We'll have Tom Griffor from Great Lakes Wealth joining us next on the MegaCast to talk about ways you can use the market to make that tax return maybe get even larger than it is coming back from the federal government or the state government. You'll want to tune in for that. Coming up next, stay tuned. This is the MechaCast. Watch Civic Center TV with our brand new live captions. To turn on live captions, go to civiccentertv.com and click Watch Live. In your web browser, click on the Options tab in the top right and find the Accessibilities tab. Then just switch on live captions to heighten your enjoyment of our local programming. Thank you so much for watching Civic Center TV. Stop by West Bloomfield Town Hall June 14th and get your health in check at the 14th Annual Greater West Bloomfield Health and Wellness Fair. Over 40 businesses, organizations, and vendors take the time to showcase healthy practices, tips, and resources for the community. Young or old, there's something for everyone and everybody. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Wednesday, June 14th, the 14th Annual Greater West Bloomfield Health and Wellness Fair. This community update from Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. When you have a gambling problem, you have a money problem. Don't let your gambling cause you financial hardship. If you or someone you love is struggling with gambling, we can help. Get free confidential counseling and win your life back. Learn more at michigan.gov slash problem gambling. When the temperatures are chilly, being together warms the soul. <laughs> winter fun going. Help protect yourself and those around you by keeping your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. Welcome back to the Megacast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keith. You can learn more about our program on our website at civiccentertv.com slash megacast. We will find information on all of our partnering stations in all corners of Oakland County and across the Great Lakes State on outlets such as My Michigan TV. In addition, on our megacast page, you'll find all of our full shows and each individual segment on demand. So you can either watch us live Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. or watch us on your time anytime on your on your computer, on your tablet, on your smart TV, and more. CivicCenterTV.com slash MegaCast. Well, it is approaching that time of the year. April 15th is right around the corner. It's tax season, and as you submit your taxes to the IRS and to the state of Michigan's Department of Treasury, you'll start to get your returns back as well in, in the coming weeks and months. And for some of you, that means going out and buying some new toy or uh, or, or uh, working on some projects around the home, but there's ways that your money can work for you in the market that you're getting back from the federal government. And here to talk to us about some of those options and where we're at right now in the in the uh, in the markets is Tom Griffor from Great Lakes Wealth, where he serves as a senior wealth advisor. Tom, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you on. Always enjoy having you and uh, Dewey Stefan and the team at Great Lakes Wealth join us on, on our program to talk about the markets. And this is an interesting time of year because. Uh, you know, there, there's always stuff to consider at this time of the year financially. So you're getting ready for your tax for your taxes, and there's, you're making sure that you're you know, you know getting your finances in check, especially if you're owing money to the federal government or to the state department of treasury. But then comes the time after that, the, the often the fun time, the most fun part of the tax season is when we're getting that tax return back. 
and often people may you know just put that in their savings account or go out and spend it on something but there's ways that we can make that money work for us that we're getting back and make more money for us off of that return potentially in the market so when people are getting their tax returns back Tom how do individuals like you and, and others on, on your team at Great Lakes Wealth work with them to put that sort of money to work for them and maybe increase that return down the line great question Tyler and you're absolutely right the deadlines coming up here yeah. April 18th is uh, right around the corner it's like almost uh, close to four weeks away but what I, we always like to advise with our clients is pay yourself first before you pay others. And what I mean by that is, uh, number one, if you have any credit card debt um, with interest rates going up currently, um, credit card debt um, payments are increasing. So if you have a loan on your credit card, make sure you pay it off. One of our sayings here is if you're basically paying 29.9% interest on your credit card debt, it's a good way to uh, pay that down and make sure that it's taken care of so you don't have additional uh, you know, additional payments on that. So make sure you pay down that credit card debt. That's a great way to make a return of 29.9%. The second thing you wanna do, uh, Tyler, is you wanna shore up your emergency fund. Um, you wanna make sure that you have at least three to six months worth of emergency funds in case something happens in your life as we know things can happen. And then the third thing is you want to take care of yourself. You want to look at uh, saving more for retirement. And uh, there's a there's a cool thing that the IRS allows you to do. It's called the Roth IRA. If you qualify, you should talk to a, a tax advisor to make sure. But you could put up to almost $6,000 into that account for the year 2022. And that was last year, right? 2022. So you kind of get a, a catch up there uh, before the deadline. So make sure you're putting that money away and saving for retirement um and, and you know make sure you're on track for your goals for sure but those are three main things that you should be considering and and, and tom at this time of the year uh, some people as, as we mentioned they may go out and spend that tax return sometimes they have projects they want to take care of or like you had said they, they're going and attacking some of that debt that they have by using that money they're getting back that they had been putting away off their pay paychecks and giving to the federal government or to the state and now it's back in their pocket but for those that are considering they're just putting that money away, putting it in their savings account. How, what are the advantages and disadvantages to that versus putting it into the market at this time? Well, that's a good question. So, you know, obviously you, you want to you wanna basically save, like I always say, pay yourself first. So you want to make sure you're paying yourself first. You're making sure that if you want to save for uh, retirement or a rainy day that you have those funds available. Um, you know, a lot of people right now are, are a little fearful of the stock market. You know, the stock market had some volatile times and volatile years, but I will say we're fighting one major thing here and everybody needs to know this, we're fighting inflation. And with inflation, um, the way you try to beat inflation is you kind of dollar cost average and invest in the market. And uh, if it's a longer term goal, you want to take advantage of that. If it's a shorter term goal, then take a look at a high yielding savings account. I mean, currently, uh, you, if you look around out there, you can get a savings account paying north of over 4% on your cash. So keep an eye on uh, deals like that and make sure your money is always working hard for you. And, and as you mentioned, the, the markets with inflation, with the state of our economy, with the state of other economies around the world and how that interacts with us here in Michigan and across the U.S., it's made that market kind of volatile. It's been down, over, it's been, uh, down and up over the last few years it's been very inconsistent and so that creates an interesting dynamic where on the one hand you can say okay that it's down and, and there's trouble in the market right now maybe I don't want to put my money there but on the other hand the market is down and what goes down in the markets tends to later on go up so there's opportunity there as you're advising your clients and, and as others at Great Lakes Wealth and other institutions like you are advising your clients what are you balancing as you're discussing with them about whether or not going into the market right now or in certain capacities now or in the future is the right move for them or if they should be a little bit more careful given the state of our economy at this time? That's a great question, Tyler. I mean, really what we're advising our clients to is really getting to know their situation. Number one, what is your short-term goal? Uh, if you have a short-term goal, you definitely don't wanna be uh, investing in the stock market and, and it's going up and down. Uh, you also have midterm goals and then of course, long-term goals. If you're saving for a retirement and something longer term down the road, this is a li lifetime opportunity to be dollar cost averaging in, which is being adding money gradually into this market. Uh, because in, over the long term, it's one of the best inflation hedges uh, that we have. 
Um, but if you have a shorter term goal, we're advising clients to look around for high paying interest rate yielding uh, savings accounts to make sure that your savings is growing while your money is sitting there. Before, years ago, uh, and not too long ago, uh, you couldn't get anything on your, your, your money in the bank. So now they're offering you some interest that helps you compound and grow your money there. So it's a good question, Tyler. I think it, it's, it's uh, you know, person specific, but more importantly, just to make sure you understand your goals and what you want to use the money for. And, and, and these are all complicated topics, and that's why talking to someone that has some experience in the industry that has expertise uh, in the markets to some, to some extent and, and others is a good idea and especially for those younger people that are just starting work maybe they graduate at the beginning at the end of last year and beginning of this year they're coming up on that graduation and they want to be saving some money especially given the economic times that we're in uh, how do you as as a wealth advisor with great lakes wealth and, and others on your team begin those conversations especially with people that are novice investors and novice traders that may be you know, advising with you to save that money and as you said pay themselves yeah first of all it's not too early to save and it's not too early or too late to save so basically what we tell uh, a lot of people is it goes back to pay yourself first you know make sure you you, uh, when you get your paycheck, you're putting money aside for whatever goal that is. If it's a retirement goal, make sure you're taking advantage of the IRS giving you these opportunities in Roth IRAs or traditional IRAs. Take advantage of your 401k. If they're matching you, make sure you get your match. So take advantage of all these tools that, uh, that are out there for you and make sure you're utilizing them to save. And set up an automatic investment plan. Uh, if you want to save $100 a month, throw it into a savings account. Maybe you're saving for college. Maybe you open up a 529 account. But, you know, saving a little bit goes a long way over time. And I would say dollar cost average into this market, if you have a long-term goal and if you have a short-term goal, make sure your money is always working for you. You know, my grandfather always said, you work hard for your money, so you want your money to work hard for you. And that should be on a consistent basis. You can find more information and get in contact with Tom and the team at Great Lakes Wealth by visiting their website at greatlakeswealth.us, greatlakeswealth.us, or you can call them at 248-378-1200, 248-378-1200, or toll free 855-578-1200, 855-578-1200. For more information, and again, their website, greatlakeswealth.us. Joining us on the program today is Tom Grifor, a senior wealth advisor at Great Lakes Wealth on today's program. So we're talking about using your tax returns to maybe get yourself prepared for retirement down the road or savings or you know, take care of some of those costs that are uh, keeping you down at this moment in time at that credit card debt. And Tom, for those that are going to a, an advisor for the first time and are really taking that bird's eye view, look at their finances now and into the future, what should they be considering or what should they be preparing before that first conversation and that first consultation with an expert like you? Good question. Just like building a house, you want to make sure you're, you build a good foundation. So you just want to make sure you gather all everything that you, you have to bring to your financial advisor, your statements, um, you know, recently what you've saved, what's in your 401k if you have one at work and really paint the picture of how you're going to kind of build that house. And um, that really helps your advisor understand your situation so that you can uh, figure out if you need to save more or maybe you can uh, spend a little bit more, which is always fun, right? So make sure you, you, you get all the details that you can with your advisor and don't hide anything from your advisor. I really recommend that. Make sure they know the whole picture. Um, and I would also say also, since it's tax season, Tyler, bring your tax returns in. Uh, let's take a look at your tax returns and make sure we can understand uh, if we can save you money on taxes. There's different investment vehicles, too, that are out there that can help with tax uh, deferral. So we definitely want to look at everything that you have. So bring bring as much information as you can to the meeting. And not everyone that's going to a, a, a wealth advisor, a financial advisor of, of any kind is necessarily a novice or doing so for the first time. Sometimes it is people that have been investing in the markets for a long time on their own or with other advisors. And so from your point of view, as you're working with these individuals, uh, what, what, what sort of are your goals as, as a professional to, to achieve in those meetings, both the initial consultations and, and over time as situations change, as goals change for your clients? 
Good question, Tyler. We, we like to sit across the table with our clients or next to them and really understand what they want to get accomplished. I mean, if they, they have an investment strategy that, that's been working for them and they understand it and they're on top of it, we want to work with them with that. Um, definitely want to do that. We don't want to dig, uh, digress from whatever they're planning on doing. But really, we want to be a good partner and educate them on other investment solutions that they might not have considered that might help them in the longer term or short term with their goals. So that's a great question. We just want to sit alongside you, be a partner, and then make sure we're working together on what you're trying to get accomplished. And it's okay if you do it on your own. We just want to help educate you and give you some more uh, dry powder, I'd like to say, to uh, look at other investment solutions. What are some of those difference makers? Because as you said, there are people that go to financial advisors like you sometimes later on in their life, or they've switched between financial advisors, they've gone on their own for a while, and they know what they're doing. They, they've had some success in the market. But what's that difference maker that a professional can bring versus somebody uh, you know, taking this on on their own? Yeah, good question. I think you know a lot of times we just focus on returns. Um, um, a lot of investors are just focused on you know uh, buying a company or focus on a return. So. I think if you, you you take a step back and really find out what your goes back to what your goals are going to be, it really helps uh, your financial planner get on the same page with you. And that's the main thing is, is figure out what you're doing and get on the same page. A lot of times, you know, if you're doing something different and your advisor has something different in mind, you know, when those two things clash, it, it doesn't work out well in the end because eventually you're just looking at returns. And it's really not always about returns, it's about how you're gonna get those returns and then turn them into a plan. We always say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's one of our big things we do here. So I think just sitting down and, and planning and making sure you have a good investment strategy lined up and you're both on the same page, really can help you out, Tyler. A lot of great resources on their website as well, greatlakeswealth.us, including information on how you can get in contact with the professionals at Great Lakes Wealth for more information. And, and if you'd like to ask some questions about your financial situation, sit down with one of them and consult on where you're at. Tax day is April 18th, and tax returns, either if you submit it early or shortly after that, will be coming your way, and a great way to address those tax returns and make them work for you is, of course, as Tom had said, put them towards some of your debts or put them into the market, make that money work for you. Uh, Tom Grifor is a senior wealth advisor at Great Lakes Wealth. Again, greatlakeswealth.us is their website. Tom, a couple more minutes with you before we'll need to move on for the day. Anything else that we haven't discussed, whether it's about tax season or the markets at this time, that would be important for our audience to keep in consideration as they're going forward? Yeah, I would I would just uh, mention, you know, don't, 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 focus too much on what the Federal Reserve is doing. I mean, we're talking about inflation. And the big thing about the Federal Reserve is their, their two main mandates is to basically have max employment and basically have price stability. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to calm down inflation, which everybody knows uh, they're kind of feeling it. Um, so in order to outpace inflation for the long term, you know, good ideas that, like I mentioned before, is get a good plan in place and dollar cost average into a, a market that's volatile. Because long term, if you have a long term goal, the stock market does outpace inflation over the long term. And there's other investments out there that can do that. Um, so and we're going to have it's interesting, Tyler, we're talking because the Fed is going to come out today and, and make a decision if they're going to raise rates again. You know, it's going to be really hard for borrowers. So if you're borrowing money at this time, um, interest rates are going up. It's going to cost you more money, obviously, to pay back that loan. So it goes back to that credit card conversation. Pay that stuff down as, as quickly as possible and make sure that that variable rate doesn't affect you. Um, and so pay down your debt. Um, just have a good plan in place. And work with somebody who can transition your plan in your investment vehicles into something that can make sense for you, either in the short term or long term. But there's lots of ideas out there and uh, get with your professional and make sure you understand all your options before you just throw a dart. You can get, uh, get with the professionals at Great Lakes Wealth by visiting their website at greatlakeswealth.us. Tom, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate you having me on. Glad to have you on and always appreciate the time from the team at Great Lakes Wealth. We'll take a break on the MegaCast. On the other side, April is Autism Awareness Month. And as we and as we get into Autism Awareness Month, what are some local professionals in our area doing to help families that may be affected by autism spectrum disorder? How do those treatments happen? How do those treatments affect those that are on the spectrum? And how do they help families right here? in Oakland County. Coming up next, a, a member from the team at Metro EHS here in West Bloomfield will join us on the Megacast.
One in four Michigan homes has high levels of radon, a naturally occurring radioactive gas known to cause lung cancer. It doesn't matter where you live or what type of home you have. You won't even know it's there unless you test. So don't wait. Testing is cheap and easy. And if there's a problem, it's simple to fix. Visit michigan.gov slash radon to learn more. We took action, will you? Let's savor these moments. Made possible by the COVID-19 vaccine. Keep the dining out going by keeping yourself protected and your COVID-19 vaccines up to date. My Michigan TV is streaming everywhere on Apple TV, Roku, Fire TV, and more smart TV apps. My Michigan TV is on your phone, too. Take us with you wherever you go. Just search for My Michigan TV on your favorite app store or visit mymitv.com. All Michigan, streaming everywhere. My Michigan TV. Welcome back to the MegaCast, our live daily TV, radio, and streaming show talking about all things Michigan. I'm Tyler Keith. You can stay up to date with us on our website on civiccentertv.com slash MegaCast, where you'll find links to all of our partnering stations and their original programming taking place right here and all about your hometown in Oakland County. And find all of our full shows on each individual segment on demand as well on civiccentertv.com slash MegaCast. April is Autism Awareness Month, and as we get into Autism Awareness Month, it's, great, it's good to consider all the different factors that may go into treating autism and those that affect families and individuals right here in Oakland County. Joining us to talk about that is Metro EHS's Anthony Davish uh, from Metro EHS, which specializes in a variety of pediatric therapies. Thank you for being with us today. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me, Tyler. Yeah, glad to have you on because we, we've had you on before to talk about some of the varieties of different forms of, of pediatric therapy that, that your organization uh, takes part in and, and, and helps families and individuals right here in our local area. But autism is something that, uh, we, as we've learned more about it over the course of time, we have developed uh, an understanding of autiz autism as being on a spectrum. And there's a variety of different ways that autism manifests itself, especially in children, and a variety of different ways I would imagine too that it is treated. So uh, can you elaborate on that and, and some of the different ways that your business helps families, helps individuals that are affected by autism spectrum disorder in terms of treatment? Yeah, we, uh, we, we provide a service called uh, Applied Behavior Analysis. And what they do, they help children um, of, uh, that are all over the spectrum. Uh, for instance, like uh, limited speech, um, poor eye contact, um, frequent behavior outbreaks, uh, limited focus and attention. Um, we provided uh, therapy um, for uh, as well as uh, for children to hit their motor skills goals, uh, social skills, uh, language communication, even small stuff like playing and uh, leisure and uh, learning and academics and uh, as well as self-care and, and and so when you have a child or, or a family that brings their child in for for uh, your assistance and, and for some of these th therapies you mentioned that they do go through a, a certain process to determine what is necessary for these kids but uh, you know it can be tough to treat autism spectrum disorder because of the various different behavioral aspects that come into play for, for one child versus another it manifests itself differently in each, in each individual. So where does that process start for you and your professionals as you're working with these families and individuals because therapies are always going to work at a different pace and a different effectiveness mm -hmm. for every person? Every child is different. You're, you're right about that. Um, the process actually starts with um, if the parent notices something different or odd about their child, what they can do is contact. The first step is actually contacting their insurance company. The insurance, their insurance company then sends them to a psychiatrist to be evaluated to see if they fall anywhere on the spectrum for autism. And, and then, Anthony, as you're working 
with these families. I would assume, too, that that involves working with their primary care provider, with a psychiatrist, to get a better understanding of this individual child or these individual children's uh, situation on the autism spectrum. So how does that relationship work, too, and how does that factor in to the different uh, therapeutic approaches you take for one child versus another with autism? Uh, what's great about Metro EHS is that we have uh, specialists that work on our team that actually help the parents and assist them in getting the right professional help that their insurance will cover as well as uh, their pediatrician. Um, we communicate with everyone that the uh, family is associated with so we can make sure that the child actually gets the help that it, uh, he or she needs. We're joined on today's program by Anthony Davis. She is the sales and a sales and marketing specialist at Metro EHS. You can find more information on Metro EHS, including all their locations, including right here in our local area, by visiting MetroEHS.com. MetroEHS.com is their website for more information. And uh, going to a psychologist or psychiatrist, certainly consulting with a primary care provider, are, are great ways to at least begin or, or continue to address uh, treating a child with autism and, and helping them adjust to the world that they're in and living uh, a, a normal life while on the spectrum. But how can a, a pediatric therapeutic solution like, like yours at Metro EHS also help to add on to that and really bolster that base of care for a child on the, on the spectrum? Um, we have all our therapists at every one of our centers. Uh, we provide a, a wide range of uh, therapies for children. Um, a lot of children that are that fall on the spectrum um, also are going to need like speech or occupational therapy. And what's good about our centers is that we provide all of them in one center, so the parents aren't driving from one place to another. Um, a lot of children that uh, end up going to uh, applied behavior analysis also are going to need speech um, as well as uh, occupational therapy or even physical therapy, and we provide all that in one center, which is very uh, good for the parents, convenient for them. More information can be found, in, including ways to get in contact with them at Metro EHS on their website, MetroEHS.com, MetroEHS.com, or call them 313-278-4601, 313-278-4601 for more information. In terms of outcomes, how do these therapies help to ideally better the outcomes uh, for the treatment for these kids. What what sort of results do you tend to see? And of course, it's kind of uh, different patient to patient. Yeah, it's, it's different from patient to patient, but to be honest, I've actually seen parents crying on how a miracle turned out with their, with their child. Like they sometimes come off as being like, okay, my child's special or different, but the thing is we bring the superhero out and every child and I've seen parents crying. I've seen <laughs> just the joy of how how much therapy actually improves their child. Yeah, having a brother on the spectrum, I, I, I understand the perspective of the various ways that autism can affect one person versus the other uh, between the friends mm -hmm. that he grew up with and, and their affliction with autism spectrum disorder and just seeing that you know, sometimes it is just some minor disconnects from uh, from um, no, neurotypical individuals, uh, and, and sometimes they can be some wide-ranging swings uh, in, in neurodivergence. But in, in these cases, these therapies can really provide that stepping stone to not necessarily eliminate those issues that may come along with 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 the or with a you know head, a normative behavior, but also but 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 instead of ignoring them, so to speak, and letting them become you know, problematic, potentially. They really do have an effect that is intermediary and can develop over time to not necessarily reverse the, those issues, but make them workable for this individual as they're navigating through their life. Yeah, um, especially at a, the younger the age, the better outcome they're going to have. Um, and you're right about that. Uh, as the, If nothing's taken care of, uh, it could be problematic um, when they're a young teen, even as they're an adult. But uh, uh, taking care of it, or fixing the issue right away is uh, the best way to come about it at a young age. 
More information and, and ways to get in contact with Anthony Davis and the team at Metro EHS can be found on their website, metroehs.com, or you can call them 313-278-4601, 313-278-4601. And uh, for, you know, for parents, what should they be considering before they bring their child to an organization like yours for some of these therapies? Because obviously, as you mentioned earlier, they're going to want to consult with their primary care physician, with their psychiatrist for their child to make sure that they're approaching this from the right angle and that they have the coverage in their insurance. But what other considerations should parents be, be, be making so that they're putting their child's best foot forward in these treatments? Um, the best thing you can do is actually give us a call, 313-278-4601. Uh, and what they can do is actually, uh, we can do an evaluation for them to see if they belong or need to come to our center. Um, if they um, are asking themselves questions about their child and uh, stuff like that, we can actually do an evaluation, see if there is something that we can help them with. And again, the number is 313-278-4601, 313-278-4601. You can also find more information about the variety of different therapies for children that are on the autism spectrum and, and, and for other children as well that may have a variety of different issues that need to be addressed by visiting metroehs.com. As, as we foc we're focusing primarily on autism spectrum disorder, uh, Anthony, but there are other issues that you also help, to help families and, and, and parents to address as well, can you talk about some of those and, and the other various treatments that you provide at Metro? Yeah, so ABA is uh, mostly for kids that are on the spectrum. Um, we provide speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy, as well as feeding and swallowing, which has become a big uh, uh, issue with a lot of children these days. And again, all that information on, on the different services can be found on Metro EHS dot com, Metro EHS dot com or 313-278. 4601. We're joined by Anthony Davis, who is a sales and marketing uh, uh, specialist at Metro EHS on today's edition of the MegaCast. Anthony, before we let you go, anything else that we should be considering or that parents should be considering if their child is on the autism spectrum and they're seeking treatment from an organization like yours? Um, we do have 13 locations around Metro Detroit, which is uh, we're trying to open up more as well. Um, we just opened up one in Madison Heights as well as West Bloomfield. Um, you can go to our website and see all our 13 different locations as well as uh, by the end of the year, we're hoping to have a few more. Um, the convenience is great and our therapists are professional and great. And if you're looking to actually, if you want to get a little more inside look, we're more than welcome to actually give you a tour of the place before uh, finding anything that you need. 313. 278-4601 is their phone number, or you can visit them at metroehs.com. Anthony, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having you on metroehs.com. Uh, that is going to do it for today's edition of the MagaCast with just a couple minutes left. I want to take you through some of our resources on our website at civiccentertv.com. I know uh, Calvin Master Control is a little bit off the beaten path from normal at this point, but uh, we'll go to our local news page, a great place to go for more information on, on what's making news across our local area all throughout the week. Each day before our shows, we will post links to articles from publications all across the local area right there so you can see what's making headlines today and what's made headlines yesterday and the days before that all throughout the week. Or if you're not able to join us during the week for our shows, you can also find that information there on the weekends. We usually will clear that page and put new information on there, new articles from the new week on Monday morning before our first show of the week. But otherwise, we have those stories on there all throughout the week. So whether it's making news today or it's made news on Monday, you'll always be up to date with the most important stories for right here in Oakland County each and every day on our website at civiccentertv.com on our local news page. In addition, public health information at the top of that page, you'll see the links that say CDC resources, state of Michigan and Oakland County. Those take you to the COVID-19 pages for each of those organizations, but also it uh, takes you just directly to their website. And so you can find more information on other public health issue, issues and news and information from reliable sources at a variety of different levels, whether you're looking for that information locally here in Oakland County, 
or across the state of Michigan from the state's Department of Health and Human Services or federal information too that may also relate. Those are great places to go for reputable information from experts at a variety of levels as you're looking into issues of public health. Then there's always our Megacast page, civiccentertv.com slash megacast, where you can learn more about original programming from community television and radio stations like ours all throughout Oakland County, whether you're in Northern Oakland County at, uh, in uh, Orion Township and Lake Orion with Orion Neighborhood TV or uh, our neighbors in Waterford at the Media Network of Waterford or great student programming on 88.1 The Biff, our radio partners out of the Bloomfield Hills School District. You can go to our Megacast page and find all their information as well as all of our full shows and individual segments on demand as well. That is it for today's edition of the program. Big thank you to each of our guests for joining us as well as our dedicated crew at the studios of My Michigan TV and Civic Center TV. Until next time, Ramadan Mubarak for those that are celebrating the holiday throughout this holy month and we'll see you very soon. Until next time, take care of each other and we'll be back with a new episode of the Megacast.